Harriet, did you get the morning paper? No. How many do you want? Well, the, these are nothing but a bunch of darn throwaways. I found everything out there except the one we pay for. Would you look in the bushes? Yeah, it's not there. I ought to phone the newspaper and complain about this service. Morning, Mom. Huh? Morning, oh, hiya, Rick. Uh, uh, Harriet, uh, do you happen to know the telephone number of the Times? No, I'm sorry. Oh, wait a minute. It's May 93846. Oh, oh, you brought it in. Yeah, what do you want to call him up for? <laughs> he oh. wants to tell him what good service we're getting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, or something like that. Uh, you reading the sports page there? Uh-huh. I'll be finished in a minute. Tell you what I'll do. I'll uh, give you the neighborhood news for the sports page. Gee, Pop, I was just in the middle of this article. Well, I'll uh, throw in the uh, green sheet, the shopping news, the neighborhood bulletin, and uh, whatever this is. You're too good to me, Pop, but I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just give you the sports page for nothing, as soon as I'm finished with it. Father can't win around here. <laughs> Where are you going? I'm going to throw away these throwaways. Oh, no, don't throw away the throwaways. I'll throw them away after I've looked at them. <laughs> you mean to say you actually read these things? Well, certainly. They have a lot of local news in them that the regular papers don't have. You know, women's club activities and things like that. Oh, I suppose. I'd miss a lot of good sales if it weren't for these papers. I knew there was something I didn't like about them. <laughs> Mom, do those papers have any hints for mothers in them? Oh, sure, lots of them. Like the care and feeding of a growing boy? <laughs> Good morning, Darb. What are you up to? Uh, I promised Harry I'd paint this table about a year ago. <laughs> Finally got around to it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, I suppose you saw it. Saw what? My picture in the paper this morning. Your picture? What'd you do, rob a bank? No, not this time. Oh, come on, you must have seen it. It's in the neighborhood paper. Maybe I've got it here someplace. On page four, right next to the Beale Cutlet sale. Oh, here we are. Hey, that's very nice. Yeah, this is a, a reasonable price for veal cutlets. <laughs> oh, look at the picture. <laughs> it's a good picture. <laughs> Let me read it to you. Uh, I can read, but not very well without your glasses. This week, your reporter dropped by the home of Mr. and Mrs. Clarence Darby. Uh, wait, is this a, a regular series? Oh, yeah, e each week they do an article about one of the people in the neighborhood. Sort of a know-your-neighbor thing. Uh, please, Oz, I do wish you wouldn't interrupt. Oh, I'm sorry. Go right ahead. Uh, we found Mr. Darby to be a genial, modest, soft-spoken... Soft-spoken? That's family. <laughs> Only after much coaxing did we learn that he is also an accomplished sportsman, outstanding member of the men's club, well-known business executive... And baloney artist. Baloney artist? <laughs> no such thing. Are you kidding with this? Who wrote this and how long did it take you? What's wrong with it? Are you kidding? Outstanding member of the men's club. The only thing outstanding about you is your dues. <laughs> Maybe the guy did pat it a little bit, but you know how those reporters are. Look at this picture. Did you expect me to believe the reporter just dropped by your house and found you sitting around like this? Why not? What's the matter with it? In your smoking jacket? In the first place, how many guys do you know who even own a smoking jacket? Well, please, Oz, speak for yourself. Look at all these trophies and this moose head. Hey, that's my... You stole my moose head. Oh, I did not. Harriet loaned it to me. Anyway, what kind of a neighbor are you if you won't help a friend out? That's Doc's dog, and he's not complaining. <laughs> I thought he looked familiar. Looks just like Doc. <laughs> just more hair. Hey, take a look at that. Hi, that belongs to David. <laughs> uh, you big phony. Why aren't you wearing your torn sweatshirt and your, your dirty old work pants so you look like you usually do when you're sitting around the house? Oh, the trouble with you is you're just jealous. Now, I think that is a very nice picture. Ozzy, are you in the garage? Yes, I am. Doc Oh, uh, okay. Uh, finish painting the table, will you? I'll be right back. Sure. Finish painting the... <laughs> oh, hi, Doc. Hi, Oz. Oh, hi, Darb. Hi, Doc. Say, I saw that article about you in the paper. Darn nice. Thank you. I stopped by your house. Sally said I might catch you over at Joe's. I missed you there. Joe said you'd gone over to Pete's. Pete said you went to Butch's, and Butch said you were coming over here. Well, you really been covering the town with that thing, haven't you? Well, I had thought of renting one of those loud speaker trucks, but I couldn't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't blame you for being excited about it. It was a darn nice write-up. Don't you think so, Oz? Well, yeah, but I think he kind of overdid it with all those trophies and things. I'll bet you guys would have done the same thing if you'd had the chance. Well, I wouldn't. I would only I'd add all my medical diplomas, a bust of Hippocrates, and somebody's coat of arms. 
I thought the idea of the thing was uh, for a man to let his neighbor see him as he really is. I suppose if they walked up here right now, you'd let them take your picture, just like you are. Well, why not? Is there any harm in a man doing a little painting around his house? Well, no, if he were doing a little painting. <laughs> the boss is back. Well, I'd better get going. Well, I gotta get going anyway. Yeah, me too. Oh, don't rush off. We have plenty more brushes. Uh, uh, no thanks, Harry. Oh, say, Darb. If you want another copy of that article, you can have our paper. Well, thanks, Doc. I already have one. What would I want with any more? Well, to send to friends or something. Thanks. It really isn't that important. <laughs> so long. So long, Doc. So long, Doc. So long, fellas. Hi, Mr. Nelson. Oh, hi, Tony. What are you doing, selling papers? No, collecting them. Mr. Darby's giving me a nickel for every one I get. <laughs> hey, Darb. Darb. Go out in the garage. I've got one for you. Got a little paint on it. Thank you. Something the matter? No, I was just thinking how much nicer you'd look in a smoking jacket. <laughs> Who wears a smoking jacket around the house? Darby. Well, only to have his picture taken. I'm not going to put on a, a smoking jacket to have lunch. Why not? Well, for one thing, I don't own one. Why don't you borrow Mr. Darby's? No, I don't want to borrow it. Well, he borrowed your moose head. And my trophies. Well, some of them belong to David and me. Well, uh, how many? All except one. Well, that was mine. <laughs> Did you ever win a pie-baking contest in 1945? <laughs> oh, one of them must have been mine. Yeah, I guess one of them was. But don't you think you ought to get the moose head and the trophies back? Well, what for? Well, in case they come over to take your picture. You won't have any props. Look, either they take me the way I am or nothing. Well, wait a minute. What makes you think they're going to take your picture in the first place? Well, I didn't say it. Ricky did. Well, I just thought if they took Mr. Darby's picture, they might take yours. Well, they're not taking everybody's picture. Just one person in each neighborhood. I'll get it. I think it's a silly idea anyway. Hello? Uh, just a second. Pop is for you. Oh. 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 Well, yeah, gee, that sounds very nice. Yeah? Oh, sure. Oh, well, that, that's fine. Thank you very much. Who's that? Well, that was the, the editor of the neighborhood paper. See, this is quite a coincidence. What is? Well, I, I just finished saying I didn't think they'd call anybody else in this neighborhood, and they did. Who did? Well, the editor of the paper. They want to take my picture. I'm going to be the neighbor of the week. Well, I thought Darby was the neighbor of the week. No, uh, well, the, he's the neighbor of this week. Uh, they want me to be neighbor of next week. Shall I get the moose head and the trophies? No, 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 no hurry. I've gotten to... Well, I, I, I don't need it. They're just going to drop in tomorrow and take a picture of me as I am around the house. Suppose they get here at 8 o'clock in the morning and you're in your pajamas. What's wrong with that? Yeah, at least you won't be wearing your sweatshirt. <laughs> don't be too sure. I have to get up early and clean the house. I don't know what all the excitement's about. The photographer's going to drop in casually tomorrow at 2.30 sharp. You mean they warn you when they're going to come? Well, of course. You don't think Darby sat around all day in a smoking jacket waiting for him to show up. He was dressed, made up, and on the set when the photographer got there. Oh, I don't think he wore makeup. Oh, I don't know. He looked pretty healthy in the picture. <laughs> you have to wear makeup, are you, Pop? I'm not going to wear anything. I mean, I'm not going to wear anything special. Whatever I have on at the time the photographer gets here, that, that's the way he can take my picture. Why don't you put on a tuxedo? That'd surprise him. Yeah, especially with a sweatshirt under it. <laughs> Will you please forget about the whole thing? When the photographer gets here tomorrow afternoon, he can take me just the way I am. Stubborn, isn't he? <laughs> okay, Mr. Nelson, we're here to take your picture. <laughs> All right, wise guy. Well, you talk about your phony poses. What are you trying to do? Create the impression you do some work around the house? What are you talking about? Reggie just told me they're going to come and take your picture today. Oh, was that today? Oh, was that today? <laughs> As if you didn't know. Well, I was painting when you came around here yesterday. Whatever I happen to be wearing when the photographer gets here, they can take it or leave it. Well, all I can say is you'd better hurry up and get out of those dirty old clothes. He's liable to be here any minute. Well, I've got two hours and 12 minutes. <laughs> it doesn't matter when he gets here, I'll be ready for him. I'm not, well, I'm not ready. Who do you think you're kidding? You'll be all cleaned up sitting in front of your fireplace with your smoking jacket on. I don't even own a smoking jacket. Are you looking for somebody? 
Is this the Nelson residence? Uh, yes, it is. Who are you looking for? Ozzie Nelson. Yeah, I'm Ozzie Nelson. Oh, well, this is for you, then. Uh, what is it? One smoking jacket. No, I didn't know. This must be to somebody else. You're Ozzie Nelson, aren't you? Yes, I am. And this is your address? Yes. Then this is your smoking jacket. Okay, thanks. Oh, uh, there's an extra 50 cent charge for special delivery. You are, thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Oz, that's pretty fast work. It took me two days to get my smoking jacket. I didn't order this. Come on, Oz. Let's go in the house and try it on and see how to look for the picture. I'm not going to wear this. For the, I'm not going to do anything for the picture. Hey, Pop. Here it is. I'll go right back for the trophy. Uh, 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 Rick? Rick? Yeah, I'll be right back. Oh, so you're not going to do anything for the picture, huh? I didn't know anything about that. That was Rick's idea. Doggone it all. The least you could do is think up an original pose. Oh, get lost. But you know somebody else in this neighborhood has already been photographed in his smoking jacket in front of a moose head with his trophies all around him. Those were my trophies. Oz, did you win a pie baking contest in 1945? No. Or the midget table tennis championship in 1948? No, that was Ricky. Ha! And you said those were your trophies. Well, well, one of them was mine. Anyway, they belonged to the family. They weren't yours, and you had no right to use them in the picture. All right, all right. Go ahead and use them. I don't mind. Come on, let's see what this looks like. No, it's not mine. There must be some mistake. Oh, is that the smoking jacket I ordered? <laughs> oh, let's see. It belongs to Harriet. Here it is, dear. Come on. <laughs> don't tell me Harriet wears a smoking jacket. No, it's yours. Uh, did I order a smoking jacket? No, it's a present from me. I thought you'd look real nice sitting around the house in it. Me? Look in a smoking jacket? Yes, especially when the photographer arrives. Uh, I tell you, I don't care what I look like. You know something? What would you say is the most valuable thing your family owns? Well, to me, it's the one thing in the world a family can never replace. Pictures. A family picture record of your life together. It's something you and your children will enjoy again and again. Of course, days like these are ideal to bring your picture record up to date. Don't wait for a special occasion. Just keep your camera handy, and you'll get pictures worth more than dollars can measure or words describe. Almost every hour of almost every day, there's a picture of your family just waiting to be taken. A picture record is so easy to have and priceless to keep. So do keep your camera handy. And remember, no camera ever made will take pictures without film. So make a note right now. On your way to work tomorrow, or when you go shopping, get two rolls of Kodak film. Dependable Kodak film in the familiar yellow box. Start this week to give your family the most valuable thing you'll ever own. Uh, what are you doing here, Rick? Well, how do you think Horace looks? Well, he looks fine. Notice that sparkle in his eye? Well, yeah. Window cleaner. <laughs> Where'd you get this thing? You never go hunting. He won it in a bingo game at Palisades Park. <laughs> Is this cup of yours real silver? No, I don't think so. Look, uh, why are you going to all this trouble? I, I told you, we don't want a lot of phony preparations for this picture. When's the photographer coming over, Bob? Well, in uh, one hour and, and uh, 22 minutes. <laughs> I, I, I don't know exactly. Well, it was pretty close. <laughs> Can you help me put Elmer up on the wall? I, I thought his name was Horace. Anyway, look, I don't want him up there. Well, what have you got against him? Well, nothing. Do we usually have that moose head hanging in the living room? No. Well, then there's no reason to put it up there now. Well, it looked pretty good hanging on Mr. Darby's wall. Look, uh, Rick, I don't care how it looked on his wall. I just don't want it up there. Uh, Harriet, will you please take those trophies off the mantelpiece? Well, why? There are trophies. Well, yeah, but it's my picture the man is taking. And we're your family, and there's nothing wrong with putting them on the mantelpiece. Yeah, you always put them up when company comes. I, 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 will you please take the moose head back to the garage, Rick? Well, okay. Sorry, Horace, but at least things will look a lot clearer to you. <laughs> I've done all this dusting for nothing? Well, no, not for nothing. The room needed a cleaning. What? You no, know, I, 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 didn't, I didn't mean it needed a cleaning. It, it, but it, it looks fine. Well, that's better. What time is it? Uh, just an hour and 20 minutes. No, I mean, what time is it really? Uh, uh, 10 minutes after one. Good. That'll give you just enough time to get out to the bakery. Well, what for? A chocolate cake. 
we're not going to have anything else in the picture. This isn't for the picture. This is for the photographer. I think we ought to offer him some coffee and cake. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I guess you're right. Uh, is the car out front? Yes, it is. Hey, just a minute. Aren't you going to change your clothes? W why? Well, to go downtown. <laughs> but if I can have my picture taken in these clothes, I can certainly go downtown in them. Okay, but please don't charge the cake at the bakery. Why not? Well, I don't want them to know you're my husband. Don't. <laughs> Fine thing. And, um, I think I'll have a loaf of rye bread. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'll get you a fresh one right out of the oven. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, good afternoon, ladies. Hey, hello. hello. How are you? Just fine. How's Harriet? Oh, she's fine, thank you. And the boy. Oh, they're fine, thank you. Oh, <gasps> did you see Mr. Darby's picture in the paper? Oh, yes, I, I saw that. Didn't he look handsome? <laughs> He's a credit to the neighborhood. Oh, my. I wish my husband would dress like that around the house instead of wearing his old clothes. Uh, don't you think a smoking jacket makes a man look distinguished, Mr. Nelson? Oh, well, yes, I, I guess it does. And I was so surprised to see that moose head. Well, I had no idea Mr. Darby was a hunter. <laughs> and an athlete. Those trophies. His family must be very proud of him. Oh, yes, I, I imagine they are. Here you are, ma'am. Oh. oh, thank you. Uh, will you just charge that, please? Certainly. Uh, we'll be seeing you, Mr. Nelson. Oh, goodbye. Yes, uh, goodbye. Uh, what'll it be, Mr. Nelson? Oh, I, uh, I want a chocolate cake, please. Oh. oh, yes. Shall I wrap it up, or would you like to eat it here, as usual? <laughs> Harriet, I've got the cake. Oh, thank you, dear. What happened to the trophies? Well, I took them down. What'd you do that for? Well, you told me to. Oh. Don't you think it looks kind of bare without the, the trophies up there? Well, I don't know why it should. We never have them up. Well, I, 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 I think they should be up there. Okay, I'll put them back right after the photographer leaves. Why don't you put them up there now? You want me to get the moose head too, Puff? No, no, no. Everybody knows I don't even have a gun. Well, you could have stared him down or, or lassoed him. Oh, no, 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 never mind the moose head. Okay, I'll get the trophies are upstairs. Uh, uh, Harriet? Yes? Uh, uh, tell me frankly, uh, what do you think of me in this sweatshirt? Frankly? I'll go change it. <laughs> no, wait a minute. I don't think you have any clean sweatshirts. Well, I, I wasn't thinking of changing to another sweatshirt. What were you thinking of changing to? Uh, well, uh, uh what happened to that uh, package that, that arrived this morning? You mean the smoking jacket? Oh, yeah, I, I believe you said that there might be a, a smoking jacket in it. It's hanging in your closet. Oh, and do I have any uh, gray slacks that are pressed? I think so. Uh, oh. Uh, wait, wait a minute. Do I detect a change of heart here? Don't tell me you're going to chicken out on the old clothes bed. <laughs> I'm not going to chicken out on anything. I, I just think it, it wouldn't be fair to you and the boys if I had my picture taken uh, looking like a... Uh, looking like a bum? <laughs> well, not like a, a bum exactly, but I mean uh, wearing my old clothes. Uh, I, I, I thought it might be a nice idea to, to change into something a little more uh, appropriate. Ozzy? Yeah? Who did you meet at the bakery? <laughs> Harriet? Oh! <laughs> oh, you look just beautiful, dear. Oh, well, uh, thank you. Uh, you don't think the scarf is too much, do you? Oh, no, no. It looks just fine. I, I, I wouldn't want to overdo this thing. Well, you didn't. You didn't borrow a dog. <laughs> <laughs> you understand now? I, I'm just doing this for the family. Yeah, that's right, dear. You blame it on us. Blaming, huh? I mean... Well, he's here. Well, he's not supposed to be here yet. Uh, you answer the door, and I'll take a nonchalant position by the mantelpiece. <laughs> oh, 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 Doc. Hi, Harriet. Why, it's all bones. Oh, it's you. Yeah, it's me, all right. Is it you? What are you all dressed up for? Are you going to paint the living room? In this outfit? Well, I didn't think you were going to get your picture taken that way after all that talk about Darby. Uh, what are you doing over here anyway? Well, I was just taking Sawbones for a walk, and I thought I'd drop in. Say, if you want to borrow him, Oz, I won't charge you any more than I charged Darby. Sit down next to Oz, boy. Uh, uh, I, I don't need a dog in the picture. Oh, then you are all dolled up to have your picture taken. What's wrong with that? Well, nothing. Is that a new smoking jacket? Oh, uh, yes, it is. 
That's a pretty nice job of polishing on those trophies. Oh, well, Harriet just shined them up a little. <laughs> well, what are you laughing at? Well, I was just thinking how funny it'd be if you went to all this trouble for nothing. What do you mean by that? Well, after all, you rubbed it in pretty good with Darb. This may be his way of getting back at you. Getting back at me? Sure. How do you know the newspaper's going to take your picture? Well, the editor phoned me. What kind of voice did he have? Well, a, a deep, resonant voice. Anything like that phony voice Darb uses every once in a while? Oh. <laughs> Darb wouldn't pull a chick like that on me. No, of course he wouldn't. Well, come on, Sawbones. So long, Oz. Uh, so long, Doc. Oh, and don't worry about that phone call. It probably was the real editor. Hello, uh, may I talk to the editor, please? Oh, oh, this is. Oh, well, uh, my name is Nelson, Ozzie Nelson. Uh, did you phone me yesterday? Well, uh, about sending a photographer over today to, to take my picture. You did? Well, uh, thank you very much. What are you doing? I'm taking off this phony outfit. You're not going to change your mind again. There's no photographer coming over here. How do you know? Well, I just talked to the editor on the phone. The whole thing is a gag. That darn Darby was trying to get back at me for kidding him. How about that? It's lucky I found out. I could have been sitting around here all day in, in this silly outfit. Well, you don't look silly to me. Get some comfortable clothes on. Well, why don't you leave those on? Well, and let Darby come over here and catch me wearing them? No, thanks. That's just what he'd like to do. Well, at least the living room got a good cleaning. Here's the Mr. Nelson. Okay, come on in, Darb. How'd you know it was me? Are you kidding? I could recognize that phony voice of yours anywhere, in person or on the telephone. What are you talking about? I think we both know what I'm talking about. Oh, we do? Say, Oz, you're a pretty brave man. What do you mean? Well, sitting around that way when you're going to have your picture taken. Yeah. I've got to hand it to you. You're really a man of your word. I would have bet anything you were going to get all dressed up in that new smoking jacket. I figured as much. Can I stick around while they take the picture off? Look, Darb, you're wasting your time. I know there's not going to be any picture. You tried a little practical joke and it didn't work. Practical joke? Yes, practical joke. I called the paper and they never even heard of me. <laughs> I can understand that. Uh, what paper did you call? The Daily Shopper. They don't have any pictures in that paper. My picture was in the Daily Shopping News. <laughs> They're due here any minute. I got to change. Oh, uh... I'll get it on. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, hello there, Mr. Darby. Hello. Say, that picture, you came out pretty good. Well, thank you. Is Mr. Nelson here? This is Mr. Nelson. Oh, how do you do? Uh, how do you do? Uh, am I early? No, he always looks that way. <laughs> Later on. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Darby. You knew I was coming, didn't you? Oh, yes, the editor phoned me and told me about it. Then you knew I was going to take your picture. Uh, yes, yes, he, he told me that. Well, I've got to hand it to you. You're the first man I've called on who hasn't gotten all dressed up for the occasion. Oh, yes, well... This is exactly what we're after, the way the average man looks around the house. Oh, yeah, well, I, I look around the house and... Uh, Where would be a good place I... for the picture? Well, uh, right here in the living room, uh, I guess. Fine. Oh, I see you've got a fireplace. Oh, yeah, we usually have a fire going. Why don't you stand right there? Uh, how's this? Yeah, that's pretty good. It'd be better if you were doing something. Have you got some kind of a prop? Well, I've got a, a paintbrush outside. Well, I was thinking of something like uh, a pipe. Well, I've got a pipe right here. Well, that's better. I'm afraid that shirt's going to look a little washed out. Don't you have a jacket or something? Well, uh, yes. As a matter of fact, I've got a brand new smoking jacket. Oh, that'd be fine. It's too bad you don't have some trophies for the mantle. It always gives the picture a nice homey touch. Oh, <laughs> Trophies, uh, our we 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 have a lot of trophies. If you just give me a couple of minutes, I think I know exactly what you want. Fine. Uh, uh, just one thing: should I get the dog, or will you pick him up? <laughs> Next week, the adventures of Ozzy and Harriet will be brought to you by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of fine foods for the whole family. Now a word about one of the many fine Quaker products. This is the C.R. Pet Ranch in California, owned by the beloved film star Charlie Ruggles. 
Charlie, aren't pets your hobby? Oh, yes, yeah, especially cats. But for the most fun, they must be in top condition. And that means good nutrition. And Puss in Boots cat food is good nutrition. It's made from fresh caught whole fish. The tasty fillets are retained for their high quality proteins. The liver and glands are rich in vitamins and minerals. Even the bone structure is made soft and digestible to supply the calcium your cat needs. For all round nutrition, tasty cereals are added. You want your cat to be beautiful and healthy full of playful energy, like Charlie Ruggles' pets. So feed Puss in Boots regularly. Puss in Boots is good nutrition. Well, what do you think? It's wonderful. I just can't believe it. Oh, it's not that. Well, yes, it is. This is the second week in a row the price of your cutlets has gone down. Today, get Kodak film in the familiar yellow box. Good night. This has been an ABC Television Network film presentation.